All right, so last time I showed you guys how to make just a normal Chrome extension. This time I want to build on top of that and show you how to make one using Webpack. So the reason you'd want to use Webpack is basically because it can bundle a bunch of things together. And what I mean by this, for example, if you have a billion different JavaScript files, you have modules, this JavaScript file points to this one and that one and this one, it will just make it simplify everything just make it one JavaScript file, one CSS file, and so on. So also we have things such as SAS. If you know what that is, it's like a, it's like a nicer way of writing CSS. If you want to do that, then you need a Webpack compiler. Uh, also things such as TypeScript or using JavaScript modules, which is splitting up the code in multiple files. So let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is just install everything we need. And what we need is, you know, let's just do init. There we go. npm install. And it's a dev dependency because we don't actually need to uh, ship it. And webpack CLI. So just webpack and webpack CLI. Boom. And yeah, they're installing. So the file structure is going to be a little bit different for this one. So all the JavaScript files we're going to have in a folder called source. So if we create a folder called source. And then let's just have our service, service worker.js. Here we can write whatever we want. And let's also make one for our pop up. So a new file, pop pop-up.js. On top of the just source folder, we're going to need a uh, folder called static. And this static folder is where we oh. and and this static folder is where we're gonna put stuff like um, our pop-up dot HTML, also our uh, popup.css, and actually also our manifest.json, which is like the most important part. So manifest.json. And let's just create that real quick. So we need a name, name, I don't know, I'll just call this on extension. You can call yours whatever you want and then a version it will be 1.0.0 and then we let's add a little description so does something <laughs> and finally let's say what is actually name of version and description and Oh, of course, we need the manifest version. So manifest version is three, um, which you all, always should be using. It's the latest version. And then let's define our icons as well, which I already have pre-made. But you're basically going to need one that is 16 and one that is 32 and one that is 48 and one that is 128 pixels. Um, and they're also going to be in the static folder. So let me just move that over. So here we have page finder. I call mine um, because it's a, it's an extension I'm working on. Uh, this is not the final. It's not anyway. Um, so then we just say, so basically what's going to happen when we use a webpack is it's going to take everything in the static folder and just put it in a folder called dist and also take everything in the source folder and compile it. So for example, pop up, we might also want to like import, let's say, uh, something from um, like something.js. We don't have something.js, but if we did, it will basically compile both pop up.js and something.js into only one file. So we don't have a bunch of different files. Um, 
and that way you can kind of clean up your code a lot. Um, but right now I'm kind of just showing you the structure, so I'm not actually going to have anything in these files. Um, yeah, so let's say the icon. So because the icons are just going to be put into this together with this, it's just assets, extension, icons, page finder 16.png. And now let's make a couple more. So what I'm doing here is control D to select two of them. Boom. Control D 48 and control D 128. There we go. Now we have our manifest adjacent. So the one last thing we need is to actually configure Webpack. So therefore we make a new file outside of the static and source folder new file and it's called webpack.config.js and in our webpack.config.js we want to have uh, the path um, pack like library package thing and oops <laughs> and what path is is basically just a default thing inside of node that lets you access files in a nice way then let's do module.exports. So it basically exports all our settings for Webpack. And we want to define our entry point. What our entry point is, is basically where should Webpack start combining all your JavaScript fi files from. And that should be, we should have two entry points. But you can add more. You can add, a, you know, a content script and stuff like that. But we're, we're just having two, just to show you how to make two. Um, so we have the pop-up and the service worker as our two entry points. And as I explained before, if pop-up has other ones it wants to import, everything comes into pop-up. That's what Webpack does. So pop-up, pop-up. And here we want to give the path to it. So it's source slash pop-up.js. And then we also have, here we can do control D once again, and do service worker. After that, we want to define the output. So the output is what are we, um, what do we want the file to look like that we're actually putting out. And um, we, so we just define the file name like this. And what you can do is you can actually just put a name like this. And that means it will put this name in there. So name dot bundle, creating a bundle dot JS. And then we also want to give it a path, which is where should we put these files. And that's where we actually use path. So path dot res resolve. Um, their name, which is basically where we are, and then this. So this just means the path will be a, a div called or a, a folder called dist, which will be created. Oops. Um, yeah. Next, let's do. Let's just put the mode to development because we're currently developing. Um, you, when you actually want to publish this, you can change it to. Um, production uh, watch which basically means it will keep watching the files so if you make a change in one of these files it will just automatically put it in the dist folder um, nice and bundled and then the last thing we want to do is we want to add a copy plugin so basically we need to install another um, package called um, it's also dev dependency. Right. Yeah. So that's called copy webpack plugin. And what this does is basically let us just copy our static folder. So we also need to import that. Um, let's just see what, what is it called? Copy webpack plugin. Copy webpack plugin 
as copy webpack webpack plugin. And here we actually want to define our plugins. So that is a list. And then we have just new copy webpack plugin. Oh, and here once again we can use control D. Plugin. And then we want to pass the like constructor op the options to this one. And it's just patterns where what do we actually wanna wanna um, copy from. So just from static. And now we are pretty much done. The only last thing we need to do is make it so we can run Webpack. And the best way, in my opinion, to do that is just make a, a script thing here. So let's do build. And build will just run the command Webpack. So now if you do npm run build, And there we have a dist folder. It has everything we need. It has the manifest.json, the bundle of the of the JavaScript, the CSS, the HTML, the service worker. As you can see, it kind of makes a bunch of stuff here, um, which you don't have to worry about. And in fact, if using like uh, Git, for example, you just want to kind of ignore these. So new file, Git, ignore. So if you don't know what Git is, it's basically, it takes your history and lets you save stuff in history in a very nice way. So we just don't want this and we don't want node modules. And that's about it. Let's just git commit it. So uh, git init. So now we have our git for this folder. So now we can add everything and git commit um, in it. That means we made our first like mark in history. Um, you can kind of see it as a, if you played video games, it's like a save point. So now we can go back to this at any time. I'm not, this is not a git tutorial. I'm not gonna show you how to do it, but now we can. Now just the last part, let's actually add this to Chrome. So if we go to Chrome, the extensions and then you need developer mode on I'm using brave by the way but it should be kind of the same load unpacked and then we have to find the one webpack chrome extension and then inside this so you don't choose this whole folder just this select folder could not load do, 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 do. The manifest version key so value must be an integer, either two or three. Uh, what did I do? Manifest.json, it might need to be in quotation marks. Retry. Hmm, wait. One second, manifest version should be three. Manifest version, it should be like that. It's weird. Mm. Let's try again. Load on packed. Select folder. The manifest version key, its value must be an integer, either two or three. All right, that's interesting. Missing manifest version key. No, you're really not though. Ah, oh, I spelled it wrong. Manifest version. All right, there it is, extension. Yeah, so now you can basically just do as you would otherwise. So, you know, change your, your pop-up.html, do it, make it do whatever you want. You can change any of these files as you want, make them do whatever you want. But now what you can do is have, for example, service worker, and then we have like, um, I don't know, let's say we have a utils.js just has some function. Um, export function, some function. 
like that. Now we can import that into service worker. So we can do import some function from utils. And then we can call some function here. So you can, you can kind of tell how this would be pretty useful if you want to clean up your code. So you can just move out um, things that don't really belong together or really belong together. It should be in a different file. Um, stuff like that. Yeah, I hope this helped. And bye.